Good morning, everybody. How's it going? It's Quinton here. And if it is not morning during the time that you're watching this video, I'm sorry. Uh, a simple hello then to you. So in this video, I want to show you guys how to download and install a few great tools that I use um, when working from the command line because I am going to be working from the command line quite a lot in future videos. And uh, yeah, there's just a few tools that I have that make working the, with the command line a lot easier um, and also just a lot more readable. Um, but I do want to mention to you guys that some of the stuff I'm showing you guys is probably only going to work in Mac. I don't think there is a Windows alternative, although um, there are some Linux options. Um, anyway, uh, let's go ahead and just take a look at the terminal real quick. So normally whenever we work with the terminal in Mac, we work with this default program that comes installed on Mac called Terminal. If you're on a Windows computer, you probably use CMD. Um, and yeah, this is pretty much what it looks like. In fact, I've actually customized my terminal here to be black with white text because um, that can all be changed in the preferences. Uh, I think by default on Mac, this is actually white with black text, but hey, um, yeah, you get the picture, you can customize terminal. But there are some things in the terminal that you cannot customize um, so easily. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm gonna show you guys basically uh, what I would like you to do. And we're not gonna be using Max default terminal, we're actually gonna be using a tool called iTerm. So open up your browser and go over to this website, which is item2.com. That's a really easy URL to remember. It's a really easy URL for you guys to type in. Um, but I will try leave a link in the video description below. And what you want to do here is just go ahead, click that download button and download and install iTerm. I'm not going to run through that installation process because I'm pretty sure most of you guys are big boys or girls and you can download and install applications on your computer by yourself. All right, so once you've got that installed on your computer, um, this is pretty much the program that you'll have uh, on your computer. And right now it looks the same as the other terminal. So I know you're probably thinking, well, what the heck? Why did I just waste my time installing this? And um, yeah, it's a little bit better than the, the default terminal. Also, um, there are, are some really cool themes for this. So I'm going to take terminal from this or iterm from this to uh, something a little bit more like this, right? And this is going to tell us exactly where we are on our computer. So it'll tell us the directory we're working in. And, you know, normal terminal kind of does do that. It's just, it looks like this. Uh, so it doesn't have that cool blue block around it. Um, also, something else that this is going to add is telling us what Git branch we're working on and whether our Git branch is dirty or clean. So a clean Git branch would be green background, whereas a dirty Git branch would be an orange background. Um, and if you guys don't know what Git branches are, if you don't know what I mean by dirty or clean uh, Git branches, then don't worry about it. I will uh, definitely be explaining this in future videos. So it'll make a lot more sense um, when you watch my series on Git. Uh, the only problem is um, right now, I just need you to trust that this is a really great tool and it's gonna come in, uh, in great handy in future. Just, you know, download and install it for now. And I don't know why I said the only problem, it's not a problem. Just go ahead and install it. It's a really awesome tool to have. So scroll down, um, by the way, uh, this is the link to the repo that we're gonna be um, uh, installing this tool from. And I will leave a link in the description below, but you just wanna scroll past the pictures uh, to how to install. And you can actually skip this first section because we should already have iTerm on our computer because we downloaded and installed it from the browser over here, right? So the next step that we wanna do is look at OhMyZSH, because that's something that I wanna install in iTerm. Now there are ways that you can probably clone this from the repo here, but um, I think just a really cool tool for you to have on your computer is something called Homebrew. And Homebrew will then allow you to install um, stuff via commands like this. So. Uh, I would ask that you um, run this command right now, but unfortunately you can't run this command without installing Homebrew on your computer first if you don't already have Homebrew on your computer. So 
you're going to need to go to homebrew's uh, website, which is brew.sh, also another really easy URL to remember. And then under install homebrew, just copy and paste that command into your terminal. Uh, I'm not going to uh, do that because I've already got brew installed on my computer. And if I paste this in and run this, it's going to take a good um, 10 minutes to run and install brew just because it is like that much of an intense um, CLI tool. All right, um, now let's go back over to the Git repo and hopefully you guys have Homebrew on your computer now. So you can copy this and paste this into your terminal and that is going to uh, clone ohmyzsh down to your computer. Um, and yeah, you can see that it already found a, a file so it made a backup. Okay, cool. Uh, right, so let's just uh, put my computer's password in here so that it can complete the installation. And now you can see that my terminal has gone from basically this up here to something like this. So if I type clear, my terminal, you know, it's a lot cleaner um, and the, the colors have changed, but there's still more to do here because this obviously doesn't look quite like the pictures. Uh, so. Uh, let's move on to the next step here. And as you can see, it says when the installation is done, you want to edit this file and change the theme. Now that's all good and well, except I don't want to use the Agnosta theme because that's, um, that's a little bit something like this. Whereas I want to use the power level nine theme that looks a little bit better. So it's got all this times that we ran the commands as well on the other side. Great. So how do I do that? Well, um, first of all, I want to just run this command down here. So that's going to clone power level nine into the themes directory of ohmyzsh. And if you don't um, do this, then some stuff's not going to work. Great, so now we've got the theme on our computer. Now we can go ahead and uh, edit the theme directory or the theme uh, uh, file. Uh, so what we need to do here is open this file on our computer. So uh, what I'm going to do is type open and then I'm going to take that file name and paste that in here. So this is actually a hidden file. It might be a little bit difficult to find on your computer unless you actually have hidden files uh, shown. Um, but otherwise you can just open it like this and Mac should open it up in a little editor. Uh, and what we want to do is change the theme. So if you want, you can try both of the themes out. One of them is Agnosta over here and the other one is Power Level 9. It's up to you to decide which one you wanna use. I'm gonna use Power Level 9 there, so let's save. And um, let's come back over to the terminal. And let's actually just close this and open it again. And ta-da, um, <laughs> the terminal does look quite a lot different, but you can see we've still got these little question marks here. And if you're like the other people who didn't read the instructions, um, you're probably leaving comments here like, what the heck, this is what I'm getting. So these are the people who don't read instructions and then they complain about things. Um, you need to make sure that you read the instructions. So let's come back here and uh, install the patched fonts. So that's the reason why these uh, question marks are showing up is because um, a terminal is trying to use fonts that don't actually, uh, are not actually installed on our computer. Right, so uh, the simple method would be to just click on source code pro. That's gonna be an easy font to install. So click on that, click download. This is gonna download it and then you can open that up, install, and that's going to install the font on your computer. Uh, you can see I'm already getting an error here because I've already got the font on my computer. So I'm just gonna close this. But if you didn't have the font, you wouldn't have that issue, right? Um, anyway, so that's now the font on our computer. Um, we could go a little bit more intense because there are a lot more fonts that we can use. Um, but if you decide that you wanna use Source Code Pro and that's the only font you need, you can skip this next step. Although, uh, yeah, if you wanna use any of the other fonts, just click on this link here um, and scroll down to the instructions and under quick installation, uh, you're gonna want to just ignore these first two paragraphs because that's all got to do with Linux. Um, and then, here, yeah, this last paragraph, this has got to do with other environments. So other environments uh, other environments being Mac, we can just copy uh, this line to clone the fonts down to our computer. 
and that's going to take a few seconds to run depending on how fast your internet is because you just got to download some fonts. And the next thing you want to do is CD into that directory. So I'm going to copy that so long and wait for this to finish running. Any second now. <laughs> okay, so now the fonts uh, have been um, cloned down to our computer so we can CD into that font directory. And you can see we are all getting already getting our uh, Git branch um, up here as well. And then the next thing you want to do is run this command here, which is going to install the fonts. So install the sh, um, and that's going to copy all the fonts into the fonts directory. And then the last section here is just cleaning up a bit. So this is going to cd back one directory, and this is going to remove the the fonts directory of our computer because now they're installed so we don't need the actual that directory on our computer anymore right so uh, yeah I know that was probably a little bit complicated and everything that we ran was via the command line so there was no visual difference but we should now have a bunch of fonts on our computer and uh, the way we can check this is if we go over to item and we go over to preferences by the way, all of this is in the instructions. So let's just go back here and show you. If you go to here where it says set this uh, font and item, you want to go to item, preferences, profiles, text, and change font. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. Item, preferences, profiles, and then uh, text, and then change the font. And uh, yeah, you'll see that obviously you've got all your default fonts, but then you've got fonts, for power line. So you want to make sure that you pick one of these fonts that say for power line. There's actually a heck of a lot of them, right? I think the best one is definitely Source Code Pro though. Um, and yeah, as you as I change the fonts, you can see that the terminal has changed as well. And now we've got these cool little icons showing up instead of question marks. Uh, right, so now our repo is, or not our repo, our terminal is looking a lot more like the pictures uh, up here, right? Except for the fact that the colors are a bit harsh, right? There's a dark yellow and a dark blue. So we can also change that in preferences here. Um, there are different color schemes. So let's go to profiles and colors and color sets. And um, yeah, you can probably use something like the pastel or no, that one's not nice. Um, is it solarized dark, right? So that looks a lot more like the pictures over here. Uh, but in fact, I don't like the default themes here. I've gone and found a material theme or a material color scheme. Um, and that is in this Git repo over here um, by Martin Seeler. Uh, so you can probably just uh, click on the link in the video description below somewhere and um, yeah, basically copy uh, this color scheme. So you can see this looks a lot better in my opinion. Um, and what you can do is either clone the repo or um, you can click on this link and then just save this and maybe put this somewhere in your downloads and just make sure that the extension is dot item colors, not, uh, not dot item colors dot text, right? So save that um, on your computer somewhere and then you can come back over to the terminal. Uh, preferences, is that actually still open back there? That, that's cool. It's funny, just working with all these different windows. All right, color presets and then import. And then obviously you can import your own uh, preference or color schemes. You can see that I've actually got that color scheme there, but it's still called dot text for some reason. So let's just uh, go over to my downloads and change that name. I don't want it to be dot text. I want it to be dot item colors. Make sure that I use it just like that. Um, and yeah, back to color presets, import this, import the color scheme. And um, yeah, it's asking me, do I want to add a duplicate color scheme? Um, I've already got it on my computer, so I'm just going to say no. Uh, but that will then add material design colors to your color scheme. And of course, now item looks much, much better. Um, all the colors are a little bit more bright and pastel uh, or material. And I like the look of that a lot better. Right, so 
Uh, this is how I'm gonna be working with Terminal in future videos, and I hope that it obviously makes things a lot more readable for you guys, um, and yeah. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you for watching this video if you watch it all the way through. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, like this video, share it with your friends because that's going to help my channel grow and I'll see you guys in the next one.